On Saturday the 7th, I got a call some minutes past 7 a.m. from a man. He said he was uh, formerly a church member. He said he had gone to our church, which used to be a GRA. We moved just before the lockdown to Ikpaja. So he said he was an old church member, and he went to our church in GRA and discovered that we were no more there. But he had a parcel for my dad, who is the pastor of the church. He said he has... So, saying that we were no more there, he came to Allen where we stay. So I'm like, okay, church member or old church member, pastor for the pastor. All right, it's fine. He said he was at um, Sholanke. I didn't know where Sholanke was. So I'm like, come to First Bank bus stop. He said he didn't know where First Bank bus stop was. So I'm like, okay, come to the front of First Bank. I'll just walk from my house. On getting there, I, um, I noticed I didn't really, I couldn't really place his face. I'm like, okay. Benefit of doubt, I may not necessarily know everybody in my father's church. I got close. The parcel he was holding wasn't really looking like a parcel. It was just black nylon. Some things were inside. So I knew, I already felt on ease. I knew something was different or something was wrong. So I just asked him, okay, how can I help you? And the next thing he said, he's looking for Peter. That's my brother's name. They're looking for my brother. Why? While I was still asking, next thing I hear, these are my men. I turn around and I see three other men. So I was surrounded by four men. I'm like, okay, what's going on here? Said he's looking for Peter. They did a business with him. They bought commodities from him. They transferred money to his account, his Zenith account, to show that he had, they knew he had his Zenith account. And he didn't deliver the commodities. I'm like, my brother doesn't sell anything. So this story I'm not buying. My brother is a musician. He's a philanthropist. He's the owner of Belefu Ninja on um, Instagram. He does, he takes care of the less privileged, motherless babies, different things. He feeds the hawkers on the road. His track record is on his page on Instagram, Belle Niger. That is who he is. So you saying you bought something from him, you transferred money to his account and he didn't pay. I knew that was some cooked up story. So why exactly are you looking for my brother? And then he said, hey, I should take him to my house that they need to see my brother. Like, so I can't take you to my house. You have to explain why you want to see my brother. While I was still talking, Hello and welcome to At The Canal on Vanguard Life. My name is Precious Chukudi and I have with me my co-host, Davila Mushake. And here on At The Canal, we'll still be talking about the hashtag NSAS, uh, calm down. And uh, you know, we wake up every day, we still see more info on what's going on. And uh, you know, at the end of the day, it still makes us wonder really like, uh, when is this all going to come to an end? Because uh, it's a very big issue for us. And the fact that um, people, that's protesters who went out there to protest, are hoping that uh, they are fighting for their rights. Some of them took kite placards where they were saying they are doing this for their children, their unborn children, yes. so that they can see that you know they fought for you know the rights of of themselves. So and you know they are also their children. And then we wake up this morning, and then we see something that is uh, really shocking. Seeing that a man, uh, Kenichuku Kiki, yes. uh, sued, uh, you know, some of our Nigerian celebrities. In fact, the list is long, really long. I think uh, you, you see that, uh, okay, two faces, they say I'm 46 others. I'm telling you, uh, Davido is there, Tiwa Savage is there, um, Fowles is there, even Pastor Sam Ade and Me Too is yes. there, Bonner Boy, Whiskey. This is almost like All Stars, <laughs> it feels like an All Stars award. But then, you know, it still boils down to the fact that uh, what exactly happened? You know, when, when did we get to this level? Because uh, we moved from a week of where everybody was in a sorrowful mood to, okay, we need to start to repair ourselves, then down to where, you know, we're now, you know, arresting ourselves. Because it's really, really, you know, questionable where people expect that the government is supposed to, you know, help with the lives of the masses, uh, fix whatever problems is going on. In fact, we said to ourselves that, oh, we're going to start to rebuild our cities, 
you know get back our lives back even though everything cannot be uh totally the same again because uh, people have lost their lives uh, family you know it's a lot of things you know people uh that were shot were shot all of all these things happen and then the accounts from the army from the governor from the police it's a whole lot of things then moving on to the judicial panel uh, the fact that a lot of people are wondering if there will be justice for people who are, you know, victims of um, answers related matters, mm -hmm. and even those who are involved in lucky shootings as well. There's a lot of questions, you know, in the minds of people. And, you know, it still boils down to the fact that, uh, you know, this is not the first time that the government would say that, uh, you know, they will come out, they will come out and deny things that is going on, you know, through mm -hmm. its agents, you know. We are, with the whole uh, frozen account, we heard uh, that it was CBN that gave the directive. Then we heard DSS give the directive because uh, they were suspecting that uh, some of these protesters were used, with or without their knowledge, you know, to forcefully uh, remove the president from his seat. You know, so all of all these allegations, really, you know, and also, you know, they they were denying them, um, you know. They also denied that they arrested, uh, you know, participants of, of the protest. But that's not what we're seeing because uh, if, you, if you saw the video earlier that was played, uh, that was Eremosele Adeni, his sister recounting uh, how her brother was kicked. And it's a very sad experience because, uh, you know, this is something you expect that, uh, you know, you know, each and every one of us will try as, as much as we can to, you know, try to see how we can help one another because uh, whether you like it or not, uh, the protest and the aftermath of the protest has affected each and every one of us, uh, whether it's in your private business or if you're working for the government because uh, some government properties were destroyed. So it has affected us in different ways, really. Uh, what do you think about the situation on the ground right now? Well, the old thing that is going on is uh, it's just um, you know the the just the government's decision. You know when you look at it, you just be wondering what's going on in the government's mind. The people are that there, what's going on there? Because you know when these old things happened, these uh, old instars and uh, instars protests, then you know, when it started, you know many Nigerians were happy. Nigerian youth were happy that you know finally youth are you know coming out to say something. Mm -hmm. Now um, with with the aspect of celebrities actually participating in this or helping to promote this um, you know this uh, this stuff of course they are just trying to promote what they believe in nobody forced them to do this they wanted to do it but then promoting it does not mean that they were also inviting hoodlums to come and you know to come and jack the protests it was peaceful until the hoodlums came to attack it so what the questions people are asking now is who are the people that they're supposed to sue is it the, the, the you know the NSAS protesters, the celebrities that helped promote these things, you know, to get to the to the to the government so that the government could also listen to the minds of the youth and also listen to what is currently going on, all the old looms that came to hijack the protest and also destroy properties. Because take it or leave it. After that, um, of course, after the uh, the, the lacking lucky alleged shooting and all that, many Nigerians went into their house. And of course, if we can still people online, you know, protesting, still raising their placards, still protesting even inside their house. But it was the old looms that we saw outside trying to destroy properties. No normal Nigerian that wants a country to proceed or a country to move ahead will try to destroy their own property. Especially somewhere that you are still praying and still hoping that they will do more. And we are all clamoring for unemployment. And we are still saying, uh, we are clamoring for um, employment and say that they should stop unemployment and create jobs and all that. And I say we are still going to make people jobless. No, not normal Nigerian. We do that. You know, one of the things that Nigerians have basically said is the fact that uh, they feel like this particular administration is not listening to the, you know, to the reply of Nigerians to... They're not listening to what exactly is happening in the country and that's the fact that uh, you know people are crying daily that they have nothing to eat there's no food there is no job even you're coming out of school and then thinking that uh, you land yourself a six-figure job is something that you know something that is, is really short lived because uh, you can't you, you can't find it have you landed yourself you a five, five figure job that's you can't thing. find it because you know that is so hard right now for very, very. the average Nigerian, really hard. Uh, you know, we keep talking of how we want to move everybody from the poverty line 
but then you know with the situation on ground it looks like it keeps getting difficult yeah. and you then, know the poverty line now exactly so like it. and then you know it, it still boils down to the fact that you know nigerians are saying does this is that this administration in in itself is not listening to us or they are just aware of what's going on and they're just trying to cover up uh whatever is going on what do you think well um based on what i what i think is that um, they are actually aware of what is currently going on because if you listen to you know if you have read the pro the some of the reports and also what is going on you know when the monarchs uh, you know the governments and all that's when they sat down to discuss of course the monarchs are saying that they know what is going on and they're trying that uh, the government should listen to what the youths are saying so definitely they know what is going on and you only see them saying that unemployment level is increasing poverty rate is going to increase by so so how many many in so so years and all that so they, they're definitely they are aware but the main thing is that we actually don't know why they are not listening to the youths you can't say maybe they are trying to cover up their government or there's actually something else that is wrong but we are talking about something else being wrong the loans are being taken out for the country every time but we are still having this situation every month, every day. We are still talking about the same thing. Every year we are talking about the same thing. It's just like there's nothing else to discuss. All we just discuss is insecurity, unemployment, and people falling below the poverty line. And also bad governance. If you notice, that is the fourth thing that people actually discuss every time. So that is what we actually want to discuss something else. All right, you know, one of the other things that, uh, you know, people would also look at is the fact that, you know, during, uh, you know, President Jonathan's time, uh, the current administration, that's the current president, also engaged in protests that even helped him uh, to even win uh, his current yes. seat. And now we have the likes of people like DJ Switch, who made an, an innocent video, uh, which some people have come out to say video was false, or some people said she was being paid, she was being used, you know, as a weapon to destroy, you know, the country. There are different factions of people who have different things to say. Now she's taking asylum in Canada, and you know, every time we see lots of Nigerians moving out of the country, saying, "Oh, we're going to chase the American dream," or "We're going to chase because it's one out of fear of the fact that." Um, you know what's going on but then let's just allow you see uh this video spirited focused united in one goal against injustice against police brutality against bad governance what started out as a protest against police brutality especially the unit called sars unfortunately just degenerated into something i i still find it hard to reconcile with in my heart I remember being there at the protest that was on stage with some beautiful um, organizers of that particular day's event. And uh, we were informed that there was a curfew for 3 p.m. I do remember that there was outrage on Twitter because it was short notice. The curfew, I think we got the information at about noon that day. And so we said, look, people came from all over Lagos. It, it was thousands of people there. The best thing we can do if people can't make it home We'll sit still, don't do anything, don't move. We'll sit still and we'll sleep over till night. It was at the toll gate. And then, and then later on, we got, uh, sorry about that. And then later on, we got, uh, I'm so sorry. I don't know if you can hear me. Okay, great. So I'm getting some messages in my ear. Okay, so um, we also got information later that, the governor wanted to see me and six other people. And I remember saying to them that we have no leader. If the governor wanted to speak to us, he should kindly come to the toll gate and address Nigerians because we've been out for over 11 days. And then the lady that came to give us the information, I do not remember her name at this time, left. She came back some 30 minutes later to inform us that the curfew had been canceled and moved to 9 p.m. I remember telling the people there this information and people cheered. While this was going on, another member that was standing behind me came up to me and said, someone is taking out the cameras from the toll gate. And I said, um, do you recognize who? Because we had, you know, we had the, I, I think the real heart of Nigerians there, we did not destroy anything except for graffiti. We did not take anything. We did not. Uh, 
that was DJ Switch, you know, speaking from where she's seeking asylum. And, uh, you know, it brings down, it, it brings us back to this discussion of how much, you know, every nation is supposed to protect its citizens. Now, if we have people like DJ Switch who feels unprotected, you know, in a country and they have to run out and seek asylum in another country, it shows that there's a lot of things going wrong, mm -hmm. you know. Yes. Because at the end of the day, it was an innocent protest. Uh, they were protesting for their rights and you know at first everybody thought that okay we didn't, nobody even foresee or foresaw that um that um it would get this this chaotic that it would be something that uh, would be so heavy in our mouths to talk about and uh, this is what happens a lot of times when uh nigerians you know stand up and you know most people have seen this as a way of the government to silence people from speaking. What do you think about that? Well, you know, of course, now the for protesters getting arrested, uh, you know, it's just um, you know, um, it's saying that uh, they are fundamental rights of the citizens for freedom of expression, of course, and um, assembly is actually being violated that they can't express themselves even though we're running the you know, democracy here in Nigeria. And you know, talking about this uh, stuff that I'm saying, this is a switch. She's not actually the only one. Currently, of course, um, that's uh, Mr. Arison, that is also a member of the Delta State uh, Judiciary Inquiry, was saying that um, that Nigerians now, or those who are part of the protests, uh, mm -hmm. protest, of course, they should be careful when picking calls because people are just calling. They are just calling them, and if you pick the call, they might tell you, "Come here, come and take something." Be careful, don't go. Why? Because DSS of the police, you know, they are just picking people picking part of these protesters. Now, the main thing is that even if they pick them, do we hear anything about it again? Now, what happens to these people? And now we are talking about uh, this thing. You know, if protest is going on, normally a peaceful protest, once it starts, the police are supposed to protest protect the peaceful protesters before the Udlums hijack it, hijack this uh, protest. And it's not only in Nigeria. Udlums hijack protest everywhere. It's not just in Nigeria. So. Police are supposed to protect them. And now you're not protect you didn't protect them and you're still not protecting them. And let's not forget that when these people were fighting, and they were still they were still fighting for the police also. So it's not like um, you know they just wanted to go against the law. They if you look at this thing, nobody came out and said, Okay, just give me employment or this one, this one, step down. If you had followed through with their demands, if the government if government had actually obeyed everything that they wanted, they would have you know gone back inside because the, the government answered them. But you saying that okay, we're going to fulfill your five demands, go inside, don't worry, we'll do it. It's just speech. This is not the first time that we're hearing it. And of course, now after this uh, protest and everything, now it's proving that it's uh, you know they are trying to prove the protesters' rights because right now their body language is saying something else. Far from uh, what they actually wrote down. You're saying this and we are trying to see what is going on. Look at the panel that was set up. What is going to happen to that panel now, you know, um, according to this, um, ac um, across the states? The one in Lagos now has been postponed. We don't even know when it will start again due to, of course, the lady that, of course, her account was also frozen and she said she can't be there. And she's also a part of the panel. Look at the other states own and many others. So definitely this thing that is going on, I really don't know. The government needs to communicate with Nigerians because right now they are communicating wrongly. You know, on the other hand, so there are also arguments of people who have said that uh, if um, this protest had not happened, we would not be having uh, this huge debt that we have uh, to pay. Like now, the governor of the US was talking about having uh, one, one trillion naira to review because if you go across the state, you'd see uh, the level of demolition, the level of destruction, you know, and so people are saying that if this protest has not started in the first place, you know, we will not have this issue. But then we also need to look at the fact that, uh, you know, most of the people who came out for this protest were young people who have been harassed, assaulted by men of the NSAS, of, of SARS, you know, and they felt like, it's, you know, it's high time we speak about this. You know, I, I was giving one uh, uh, example of when I just came back from work one time and then on my street, I just saw um, a bus just parked and then all of these guys that would come back from work around like about eight o'clock, they just broke them into the bus. They packed them up and then took them away. And then, you know, their families would have been expecting that this person would come back only for them to be calling the next day and say, oh, we're in police station or so sort of thing happened. So these, all of all these things were the reasons why you know, the youth decided to come out and say, okay, 
uh, enough is enough. I need do, you know, do you know another uh, funny thing is that once you're picked up, you're not allowed to make a call immediately. So your family yeah, is not for you. Not that. just that day. Even if you are lucky enough, it might be the next day or three days after. Sometimes they, they won't allow you to make a call. So your family will just be looking for you. Too. Your family members will just be looking for you. So not just that day. So you with your phone, they first collect your phone, they do everything. At least they would have given you your phone. Okay, take call someone, let them know that you are. You know, you are here or you are somewhere else or others. So sometimes you just think, okay, my child is in school, my child is in so so place and all that. And you don't know what is actually going on. That is the main thing. There are also, you know, like other arguments of people saying that, you know, the situation of the hashtag in South process has, you know, brought really cool to the country or the international scene. You know, because, you know, I remember how, you know, everybody was wondering what's going on. Even CNN paid more attention to us at Jazeera all the international news network are uh, trying to find out what's going on if you will now DJ switch being in canada is another reason for the international uh international countries you know to focus on us and be wondering what exactly is going on um, and are, are people in nigeria are safe. not safe are they can't they speak up or what exactly is really going on and also you know it it also brought about the fact that um, you know that if the government had basically handled the situation in the right way that they should have done. Maybe all these things were not escalated in this way. And you know, I think the escalation process even started from the denial wow. of events. You know, the denial of event that it didn't happen, and then people got and got angry and started um, looting, started destroying places, you know, and started killing different people. And so. And that's one of the reasons why uh, we're taking our time, you know, to also appeal to the government to, you know, find a meet part with, you know, with NSAS protesters and also with Nigerians too, because, uh, you know, this now is affecting not just these NSAS protesters, it's also affecting us too, you know, as a people, uh, because I, I, you, can, you can't go out now, you can't even just pick your phone with this whole incident of them picking different people at random places, uh, with Era Mercedes' sister, her experience, nobody knows who is next. So the average Nigerian is scared of picking up their phone. Or if you see uh, like a random number now calls you, you look down there. But I, 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 I won't actually call this thing a ridicule in the front of the, you know, in the international, you know, in the international space because look at what happened to the United States, what happened in the US, you know, recently this year about the Black Lives Matter. We didn't laugh about that matter. Everybody just followed them to, you know. Just look at what happened, and they also they were also protesting for their own rights, asking for them to stop treating black people badly, and also that's what happened here in Nigeria. But you know, the all the main thing now that it's actually making people laugh, or the international people laugh now, it's the government response after, not the uh, 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 the protest. The protest actually did not make people laugh. People joined, and also of course many football uh, famous uh, football musician uh, footballers, I mean musicians also yeah. joined. I you understand know that, footballers that, that carried, actually yeah, carry the placards carried. and also change their dresses yeah. and also musicians that also you know they were all using their Twitter space or their internet space you know to protest for Nigerians and to support them. But right now this is what is even making Nigeria and uh, making other people laugh. Because they're just looking at it, okay your government don't care about you and all that. That is what people are feeling. So definitely it's not the protesters that cause these things. Mm -hmm. It's the government that's actually the cause of the ridicule. All right, so what would you suggest for the government to do? Uh, the main the thing for them is to communicate with Nigerians rightly, in the right way, and do the situation very, uh, you know, in a peaceful manner. Let our problem, you know, our uh, problems uh, solving is actually, I don't know, should I say it's very poor? The solution we don't have actually have the solution for all those matters then that's why i just say you know our pro crisis pre crisis everything is actually the dumb we need to bring it back look at these things put it back you know in the table and try to look at put the interest of nigerians first the citizens without the citizens citizen of a country of course the city, the country won't stand if right. you don't have the trust of nigerians there's nothing that will actually happen Okay, so I've been seeing some messages coming uh, on the group, and I think I just want to take some of it. And uh, this is from, uh, so this is from Moses Williams. It says, uh, Nigeria as a country has lost sanity. Our country is ruled by propagandists and invalids that do not see beyond their pot belly. Why haven't they tracked down sponsors of Boko Haram? A uh, shame on Buhari and his cohorts. Hmm. I still repeat, we are just a joke of a country, but sure, 
this to pass. Well, that is Moses Williams' uh, comment, but uh, I think we need to be very easy with the insult. Uh, we just need to focus more on ways on because at the end of the day, we are the people, we are the owners of Nigeria, and we need to, you know, come together, you know, and you know, resolve this whole thing. And this is from Usobo. He says, uh, "What kind of country is this? So, are we in military dictatorship?" And you know, that's one of the things that a lot of people have been asking, really. That um, you know, it just feels like everybody they are trying to pick is like they want to silence everybody from speaking yes. about the hashtag uh, NSAS. And uh, you know, so there's a lot of okay, you know, there's a lot of things coming on. Well, but we just hope that uh, you know, the government is able to find a common ground on this Absolutely. issue because the lucky shooting is yet to be resolved. The judicial panel has been put on hold here in Lagos. There's a lot of things that needs to be done, and now they are picking up people. People cannot travel anymore. There's a list going around of uh, people that uh, are wanted. You know, some of the NSAS promoters that are wanted. Now there's someone who is suing about 50 people, you know, suing them for causing damages to him. You know, it's a lot of things. And when you put all, all of these things in perspective, we really need the government to find a solution. Well, that's all we can take at the canal today. Uh, remember that you can equally like, share, and subscribe on all our social media platforms sharing on your screen. As well as you can go on our website, www.vanguardnjl.com to find out more about our top stories. Uh, so I come away next time, I read Precious Chupili and my co-host. Thank you for watching. The road. His track record is on his page on Instagram, Belle Ninja. That is who he is. So you saying you bought something from him, you transferred money to his account, and he didn't pay. I knew that was some cooked up story. So why exactly are you looking for my brother? And then you said, hey, I should take him to my house, that they need to see my brother. Like, sir, I can't take you to my house. You have to explain why you want to see my brother. While I was still talking, while I was still talking, next thing, Three trucks, three hillocks pull up with um, their auger that led them, CSP, Hamzat. When he came down, every other person came down. Two people were in, two of the um, hillocks were in front of the first bank. One was on the other side of the road. And all of them came down. I'm like, madam, why are you delaying? What is it? I'm like, okay, it was like a movie. What is going on right now? And then the, the one that was calling me was trying to play good cop, bad cop. And Shibia was telling you, you should have listened to us first. At least we don't carry uniform. We, know we cannot carry any gun. You should have listened to us first. Now these ones have come. I'm like, she so asked me to get into the car. I didn't want to go into that car. because. So I just asked the guy that made the call. I'm like, my house is closed by, let's just walk. My house is closed by, let's just walk. So they deceived me, in quotes to get to my brother. They pulled me out to get to my brother. When they got to the house, they were still telling the story of how they bought commodity from him and he didn't deliver. Even when the lawyer came in, because we started making calls there and then, some people came in, even when the lawyer came in, the lawyer still asked them, 